I'm Lisa Evers, and this is Street Soldiers. Fox 5 and Hot 97 present Street Soldiers with Lisa Evers. On social media, they look like they're in love. The perfect couple dressed to the nines and posing in all the right places. But the reality is just the opposite. So how do we know when the picture tells the real story? Social media has changed love and relationships and even the dating game with almost mandatory image upgrades, says Dr. Elisa English. Tinder, that when women post uh, images of themselves that aren't filtered, they don't get that many swipes. It's a fantasy, you won't come to when it comes to celebrity relationships, don't believe the hype, says Grammy-nominated hip-hop artist and reality TV star Peter Guns. He was just tapped to host the international hit Cheaters, the first African-American in the show's 20-year history. 90% of the time, it's just all uh, fake. 90% it's only because I think that if you're happy, and I think the best way to be happy is to keep it private. Ready? We're going backwards. Then we going frontwards. I think people fake even relationships just to be on TV or, yeah, just to sell a product. While the images may be fantasy, a positive reaction can be addicting, according to Dr. Elisa. People need that validation, and it's something about presenting an image of yourself and your family that makes people feel a sense of worth. And every time someone likes or swipes or comments, it gives them that dopamine rush. Peter Guns, a father of 10, whose complicated personal life played out painfully on reality TV for years, says he finally believes in having one true love. Sort of. I think the hardest thing in the world is to be with one person. So many beautiful people out here. It's hard. I finally got to an age where I'm just tired and it's just wrong and I got older kids and it's just time to chill out. So what is true love? Let's find out what our panel has to say. Joining me is the one and only Peter Guns, hip hop artist. He's a reality TV star and he was just named the host of the Cheaters TV show on the CW Plus network. It's been on them, that network, for about 20 years and he is the first African American host for this international hit. So, Peter, great to have you with uh, us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you, and congratulations on the yeah. new uh, the you. new post. I appreciate it. Thank you. That's awesome. We're, we're going to talk about that for sure. Yes. Also joining us is Dr. Elisa English. She's a clinical therapist and mental health and relationship expert. Dr. Elisa, great to have you with us again. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Peter, first of all, you have lived your life inside out, in public, yes, as a hip-hop artist, but it really went to another level when you were on Love and Hip Hop New York. Yes. What can you tell us about these relationships that we're seeing? It seems like a lot of celebrities have them one week, then they're broken up, and then the next week it's somebody else. But in the meantime, they're professing all this true love. How do we take that in? Um, I, I think 90% of it is just for, you know, um, attention. Some of them call TMZ, meet, meet me here. Oh, I got a tip. Meanwhile, it's the actual person calling. I'm, they want to be seen. They want to be, you know, it's, it's all to promote something or just to promote a product. And I mean, some of those relationships produce kids, which is, which is weird, you know. So yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's like it's always, uh, it's hard. I always put the clock on when I see certain relationships, like, like the time yeah. clock. I almost want to do. A, I almost want to get on and do a like, yo, I'm, I got. I got like a bet, make yeah, a bet. Yeah, five hundred. This won't last past June. You know, right. I always, I always want to do that. I think it's a lot of money in that. A lot of money in that, <laughs> Dr. Lisa. We see these, we see these relationships. Do you agree, agree with Peter? Like that, the vast majority are fake. Oh, absolutely. We live in a society now that all we want is attention. And so anytime you swipe right, you click like, and you comment, you're validating someone who is certainly feeling emotionally depleted, and that validation helps them feel a sense of purpose and value in life. And so it's all part of just living in this filtered lifestyle that we're living now. Okay, well, what about like... You know, we talk about people like the the average person, Peter. You see, like somebody, because I want to get into the celebrity thing and your experience with it too. But just like the average person, all of a sudden this guy is like professing his love for his girlfriend or his wife or his, his child's mother, and it's just like this, like you know, two-page thing on Instagram telling what what you know how great she is. When you look at that, what do you think of? I don't know. I think he, he must have messed up or something, <laughs> <laughs> or he's doing something. I think um doing too much. Yeah, he definitely <laughs> doing too much. 
I'm the king of doing too much, so I know when somebody's doing too much. You can tell right away. Yeah, I spot it right away. I, I think, you know, most of the times that you just constantly talking about your relationship on Instagram, how good it is, I think there's something that's like you lacking something there. Because I think the best way to keep your relationship healthy is not to not to put it out there. Not to talk about it at all. Uh, you leave room. Too many people hate. You leave room for people to hate. You might get a DM or something, you know, that might mess your whole thing up. Or people, to me, for the most part, people will say, I'm happy for you. I'm glad you're happy. But it's a lot of people out there that don't want to see you happy. So it's best to keep your relationship to yourself. And uh, because, and, and, just, and just in general, I think that if you have to do all of that, then you're not somewhere There's something, something, something that somebody wrong. messed up yeah. or something yeah. else go what do you yeah, think about because that because the please? flip side of the like and the comment of positivity is the no comment and wait waiting 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 oh nobody cares okay right. so now I feel totally deflated right and devalued so that really can have a really serious consequence because down people that leads into mental health issues and depression which Perhaps there was some mental health issues from the start that they've been masking through these social media platforms. But, but, the, but all of the, or the lack of feedback depresses them or whatever. Totally. But Peter, I'm gonna, I want to ask you what I know everybody wants to know. When you went from, you know, you, you, were, you are famous as a rapper, as, as a New York hip hop artist, right. one of our legends. The, but when you went on Love and Hip Hop New York, that was a whole different ball game in terms of scrutiny of your personal life, how you were living, all these relationships, father of ten, mm -hmm. all of this going on. Take us through that process. What was that like for you? It was um, it was rough because you know people always say oh, I blame the show. The shows they they do that to people. I knew what I was getting to when I went to the show. So I hate when people come to me and or people on the show complain about what they signed up for. You know when you sign up for whatever you say or do. They can spin it, flip it, whatever it is. You know what you signed up for. So I never blame the show. But at the time I did the show, I held off from doing the show for two years. They've been calling me for two years. But I had a son, Corey Guns, who was signing Young Money. He was on the rise. And I didn't want to compromise his career with him having to do interviews. About your drama or whatever my, yeah, was going which on. Which ended up happening anyway. But when he... It took him a minute to get started and, and, and set up. And things got really bad for me. You know, so it was a, it was really a call of financial. I needed to provide for my kids. And I thought that the platform could help me provide. Tyra become, you know, the actor that she's trying to be in. Amina exposed her talent for music. But because my storyline was so real, and I think that, you know, there's something that I would talk to you about, something is that it's hard to explain. But my storyline was real, and then it got even Real, more real for me when I did the show in terms of I, one minute I'm feeling sorry for this one because the, 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 they're killing her all over the social media or, right. and she's depressed mm -hmm. and then when she, this one gets depressed I gotta go over there you know and so I really had a mental almost a mental breakdown like because I'm not dealing with you to, yeah. you know like keep it keep it afloat and um so I have regrets for them like if, if people say do you regret doing the show yeah for two reasons because to me they they regret it. They don't they don't like you know um, me. I don't care what these people say on Instagram and Twitter. Like if you got time to sit down and I'm not a fan of Trump, but you'll never find me under his page saying all kind of ugly things about him. You right. got time to do that. It's too much. I have too much time on my hand to do other things. But I felt in terms of them, I, I, that and my kids eventually will see this. That haunts me. You know I have to answer to my kids for some of the shenanigans I did on the show. And I didn't make enough money to put any of them through college. So there was no price to be put on, on just your peace of mind and, and feeling good about everything. Right. And having I really, healthy relationships. Just, just for everyone else. Right. Like, it's my, me, I don't care. But I care that she's hurt. I care that she's hurt. And I care that eventually I have to answer to my kids for what I did to them. Dr. Lisa, what do you think about that? I mean, I think that you're... I think you're being a little hard on yourself because I think you cared enough because you felt that it would be a way to put food on the table at a dark time right. in your life. And you were willing to make a certain sacrifice but didn't really know that it would have that level of yeah, you backlash. Know, backlash. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And so now that you think about it, you're able to be, reflect and process and say, for the sake of my children and the people that I love, maybe I would have done things differently. Absolutely. But at the same time, you had a choice to make that was about your own survival. Absolutely. So you need to feel proud of that, the fact that you wanted to at least help your family in a dark time. All right, it's, we're going to take... Funny, we're, all right, it's funny she said that. Let's just say this real quick. It's funny you say that. That's the only thing that keeps me 
saying is that I know there was no malice in my heart when I signed on right. to do it. So. Mm -hmm. They did it for the for the right reasons. I know that. People totally. don't think I did, but I did. All right. This is Street Soldiers. We're talking about real versus fake relationships with so many choices out there. We see them on our phones all day long, all night long. I'm going to find out what our panel has to say about the question of, is there such a thing now as one true love? That's coming up next. It's hard to be one person. I think that's the hardest thing I've ever had to do. Peter, the question. You have 10 children. You've been in love, obviously, a number of times. Yes. Is there such a thing in 2020 as one true love, in your opinion, yes. as an expert in this area? <laughs> yes, I, th I think so. You know, it took, it took me a long time to get to this point. Yeah, I'm, you know, I crossed 50 now, so now, you know, I'm, I'm at a point in a different, different time in my life where I can see myself with one person only, you know, but that's recent. It wasn't like, I, I wasn't thinking like this even five years ago. I didn't think it, it was possible, but I think so, yeah. I think so now. Do you think that has a lot to do with the hyper-masculine society we live in now, that having multiple partners is like sort of the status quo or makes you right. feel like you're still, validated still, as a man, so you're I, still looking for a little validation? Well, listen, <laughs> you know, it's always been that way. My father, my father always had multiple women. Mm -hmm. Even while him and my mother were together, I grew up, my uncles, it was like the norm. So it's not just today, it was then. You know what I mean? In fact, I, until I got on Love and Hip Hop and people started criticizing me, I'm like, what am I doing? Every man, is, mm. everybody around me is doing this. Were you surprised that people were like, wow, how can you be, he's cheating on this one, cheating on that one? A part of it was surprised that, that it was just two women they were just mad about. You know what I mean? It's been more than that before. So I was just like, damn, like this is, because I, I, I didn't, this is a true story. I've never met a man that didn't cheat, ever. Mm. I'm not saying he don't exist. I just never met him. Not none of my friends or nobody <laughs> I knew at the time. They're going to kill me for this when they see this stuff. But. Well, I mean, facts, he, facts. I mean, he's... What about that, Dr. I Lisa? mean, it's total facts. Like, we live in our own reality and our own experiences, and child, children learn from the adults around them. And so a lot of what he perpetuated was from his own experiences. And I don't know if he feels good or bad about that but it was part of his experience i accepted i accepted that recently my father passed away and oh, I'm you know so, but I'm for, sorry for, all, for all of my life i was in denial that my childhood probably had anything to do with it i just thought it was just normal right. but again you know women are beautiful and women think men are beautiful i think women have a lot more control of themselves you know um it's hard to be with one person i think that's the hardest thing i've ever had to do is be with one person at a time. Yes, I've disciplined myself in so many ways. Like I, I like to drink, but now I only drink one month on, one month off. Mm. I make sure I get up every day and I and I run two miles and I do my 500 push-ups, my 500 pull-ups, my dips. That's discipline. But when it was time to say, okay, I'm only going to be committed to this one person, it was impossible. Well, you incorporated some self-care. Right. That's important. Yeah, but right. that didn't help because, yo, he looked good for his age. So more and more. So then, then you want to keep doing more. You, you want to keep doing more. But what, <laughs> but what about in, ter in terms of the pressure? So so now you're on, you, you, you know, when you were first on Love and Hip Hop and right. all the dramas going on with Amina and, and Tara, Tara mm -hmm. the, um, all of this is happening. People are commenting on social media. You're posting pictures. They're posting pictures. Some of the things look, will look really beautiful and very romantic. How did that mess with you or did that mess with your head? It was more, again, it was them. Like, it, it, you'd be hard-pressed to get me to be upset about something somebody put up about me. You know, maybe one time somebody put that I was dealing with a teenage girl and I sued, and I got upset about that because I have teenage children. That's, that's unacceptable. Right. You know, I don't date people, you know, you know that, that was just disgusting. But for the most part, you, it'd be hard-pressed for you to get me upset. But the fact that they were on, you know, their friends and family, because you got family members calling you like, who is he? Like, what is that? So, you know, I'm not invited to Thanksgiving anymore. And, you know, so that the, the personal things were bothering me. Now, while we see these, you know, in, Insta relationships and Insta breakups all over Instagram and, and social, social media, true love really does exist. Oh, Doesn't absolutely. It? We all at least have one aunt and uncle, our grandparents that stayed together for 50, 60 years. And like, it seemed really healthy. Every She cooked every day. He worked and provided. So there's relationships out there. They're just not on social media. 
even of the current generation. Oh, the millennials love to live through social media, and so their their thoughts about relationships it feels endless. So there's no nothing. They're not really vested in the relationship. There was a time when people were invested in their relationships, and in fact, relational theory suggests that when you are invested, it increases your opportunity to to stay together longer. And when you say so invested, you, what is invested? Mean? Invested. Uh, property, um, children, children, right? Peter, um, what do you think about family that? ties? Like especially friends, at this, this, especially at this stage in your life, like yeah, the I, being being invested in a relationship. Yeah, I think uh, I think even if the relationship had, I mean, all relationships have their ups and downs, but they were able to handle them in in house. I think you know being on social media involves other people to. You know, because I other people will comment, and the person might pay attention to the comments. Or, but if you keep things in ho in house, there's certain things you can get past if just you and this person just c get through it. Or maybe a therapist. But I believe, um, I you believe support of family and friends. Right, right, right. right. I believe, I, yeah, I believe the support of family and friends. If you if your relationship is private, you can. There were old olden days where. At least I have aunts and uncles that have been together. They're like that, and they they know each other, yeah. and they do things, mm -hmm. and they still are right. affectionate. And <laughs> they had their ups, and, they have their ups yeah. and downs like everyone else, but they they pulled it together and stayed together. Yeah. But as as you as you look at your life now, where where you're at now, some of your kids are grown, yeah. some of them are still very small. In in terms of, are you looking for a true love? Yeah, I'm, I think settling down now is 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 with a person that person is lucky. I've done everything. I'm good. I don't ever want to see anybody hurt like that anymore. I don't want to hurt. I'm getting old, you know. Most people say you wait till you old and <laughs> start breaking they, down. <laughs> but, you don't look like you're breaking down no, at, no, all, no, at all. No, but Absolutely. you know, you look, you look great actually. Yeah, now, you know, it took it took 50 years for me to get here, but I'm here. You know what I mean? So it's I, I think it's possible. Yeah. Never too late to heal. I also want to add that you know, in the, in the millennial generation, the fact that you may have a million other possibilities. I've met this one person online, and so if that breaks, if I break up with him or her, who cares? I have another more. potential two or three million uh, candidates to to date. So it's like it's a just very mentality. disposable mentality. Yeah. But what about Before the true love? he had to get the guy on the football team. <laughs> he interested. The one guy. <laughs> that one guy. But are there, Dr. Lisa, are, are there like from, from your professional clinical therapy world, are there real, are there signs of true love? Like, do they define signs of true love? Hmm, that's a really good question. And I think true love is defined by the two people who are in that union and how they define true love. And if they're able to define that, then it is true love. I don't think we as external to that partnership are true of love. what true love is, but what people feel between the two, the two individuals, and they're able to say, this is what I feel, this is what this person does for me, this is how this person supports me, loves me, validates me, caresses me. This is what I and see And this is what they love. do, and, that, right. and, the, and that's what totally. it is. Well, I want to thank you guys for being with us for this episode mm -hmm. of Street Soldiers. Yes. Peter Guns, congratulations on the new thank role. You. Yeah, History making, first yes, African American you. host of Cheaters. Yes, and rest in Send peace, rest therapy, in peace to Clark all the Gable. Cheaters. Uh, he passed away untimely death, as, and that's how I'm, uh, that's they were looking for a new host. It's me, but rest in peace to Clark Gable, who is Clark Gable's grandson, by the way. He passed away, I think, 31 years old. Wow. Oh wow! Oh, so. Um, you know, I'm, I'm glad I got the job. It's bittersweet. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to be a little airy around the set. But um, rest in peace to Clark Abel and his family. Yeah. My condolences. And, and, be and best of luck to you with this this Thank whole you. new chapter in so many ways. Send Thank everyone you. to therapy. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> <all couples gonna, laughs> Start with Dr. Lisa. Start with me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank well, you. cheaters have a resident therapist on the show. That's the question. They need it. Yeah, <laughs> they need it. All right, Dr. Lisa English, thank you so much for being with thank us. We you, really Lisa. appreciate it. And thank you for thank being you. with us thank for this you. episode of Street Soldiers. Wishing all of you watching, all of you who support the show, a very happy Valentine's Day. Sending you lots and lots and lots of love. And remember, use your mind. It's your best weapon. I hope it's your only weapon. Let's push for peace and love.